York, the United Nations Security Council meets to discuss the British-Iranian oil controversy. But Iran's Dr. Ali Goli Adalan says that the British complaint raised by Sir Gladwin Jebb is not the UN's business. Nevertheless, Council President Mooney's orders a hearing. Overriding objections from Russia's Tsarapkin, the Council votes stands proudly in the railway yards at Selv, just inside the U.S. zone of Germany. Only a short while before, guided by an iron nerve Czech engineer and his assistant, it made a break through the Czechoslovakian communist border for freedom. Now, the 31 Czechs aboard who received asylum, among them engineers Konvalinka and Truska, are releasing balloons to their fellow countrymen behind the Iron Curtain. Inside are messages sponsored by Radio Free Europe, explaining the freedom-loving Czechs flight because conditions under red rule were intolerable. October is traditionally moving time, and the Eisenhowers get a new home. It's in Marne la Coquette, where General Eisenhower was recently made an honorary citizen. Mrs. Eisenhower is just getting used to her latest home, which has been decorated by France's National Fine Arts Service. The villa is in the Valley of the Seine, only 10 miles from Paris and close to Ike's Supreme Headquarters. In New York, screen star George Murphy visits Look Magazine and finds publisher Gardner Coles and his staff at work on a story about Movie Time USA, the industry's year-long celebration of the 50th anniversary of the first motion picture uh, theater. Coles. Why, George Murphy, what, what are you doing in New York? Well, I was passing through town and I thought I'd drop up here backstage at Look Magazine. I understand that you're doing a wonderful issue on Hollywood and that's for town, you know, and I'd like uh, to get some advanced soap. Well, I'm uh, delighted to tell you about it. Fellows, this is George Murphy. Gentlemen, it's very nice to see you. George, we are doing a major story in Luck on the new motion pictures being released by Hollywood because we think the quality is so good we wanted to tell the public about it. Yeah, I want to show you some of the pictures in this story. For example, here's Full Vadis, the greatest show on earth. Saturday's Hero. Alice in Wonderland, American in Paris, Streetcar Named Desire, Bright Victory, David and Bathsheba. You know, we're having another very exciting experiment at the moment. We're putting on Movie Time USA, which you've heard about, I'm sure. We're sending about 125 live stars and starlets out all over the country into the different towns so that the customers who have been seeing pictures over the years will have a chance to get to see them in the flesh and really get to know them. Get to know that they're just ordinary people like everybody else. Wonderful. Have I think that's most great. Of these pictures? Well, I've seen quite a lot of them, but I want to see every one of them, George, because I think they're the best Hollywood's done. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, and you're not any more anxious to see those pictures than I am to see that new issue of Look Magazine. Oh, you're very kind you to say that. You wouldn't happen to have one with you, I don't suppose, up here in the. Oh, uh, George has got one right here. Here's the issue of Look, which has the story about Hollywood and these new pictures in it. Well, thank you very much. Will you autograph it for me? Later? I certainly will. George, you were wonderful to come up. Glad to see you again. It's sudden death for Giants and Dodgers in the third and final playoff game for the National League pennant. The Giants trail four to one with one out and men on first and third. Dodger hurler Don Newcomb pitches. Whitey Lockman connects, and it's a solid hit in this, the greatest baseball thriller of all time. Dark scores. Mueller stops at third, and Lockman goes into second. With just two outs standing between Brooklyn and the pennant, the Dodgers still lead 4-2. to two. Ralph Franca replaces Newcomb on the mound. The excitement reaches its peak. Bobby Thompson up at bat. Franca throws, and then it happens. The most dramatic moment in all baseball history. It's a home run and a pennant for the New York Giants. Watch New York manager Leo DeRozier go into delirium at left screen. Teammate Eddie Sankey runs to hug Leo as three runs score to give the Giants a 5-4 victory. The greatest reception of all awaits home run hitter Thompson as he comes home, while Leo and Eddie tumble down with glee. Bobby Thompson is carried off in triumph, while almost overlooked in the excitement, the losing Dodgers walk sadly into oblivion for 1951 at least. On August 11th, the Giants, 13 and a half games out of first place, weren't thought to have a chance in the world. But in a heart-stopping stretch drive, they caught Brooklyn, tied them for the season, then beat them in the playoff. The team that wouldn't give up is series-bound. The very next day,
day, the Giants face the Yanks in the World Series opener. Yankee manager Casey Stengel and Giant manager DeRocher pose prettily for the cameramen as a crowd of 66,000 packs Yankee Stadium. The Giants start Dave Coslow while Ali Reynolds is starting pitcher for the Yanks. Giants up in the first, two out and two on. Whitey Lockman connects, sending out a drive that bounces into the stands for a ground rule double. Hank Thompson scores. The ump motions Monty Irvin to stay on third, but he runs home anyway. Irvin has to go back, but he seems to have home plate on his mind. For suddenly, as the great crowd gasps, he's off. It's the first steal of home in a World Series in 30 years, and it gives the Giants a two-to-nothing lead. Now the sixth. With one out, one on, giant pitcher Coslow sacrifices to send West Westrom to second. After Stanky walks, Alvin Dark comes to bat, and wham! The ball keeps going, going, and it's a home run into the lower left field stand. The amazing Giants have once again struck suddenly and decisively. While Giant fans hope they never wake up from a happy baseball dream that's been going on for nearly two months, Westrom, Stanky, and Dark come in. The Giants wallop the Yankees 5-1 in the series opener.